I normally try to say something quirky or clever here, but honestly, I got nothing this time because Duck Hunt doesn't speak. Anyway, this week's character breakdown is Duck Hunt, who made their first appearance in, correct, Duck Hunt, which released for the NES in 1984. It wasn't widely known until recently, over 30 years after release, that Duck Hunt actually has a two-player mode where the second controller could control the duck. In the arcade version of the game, you can actually shoot the dog, but please don't do that. And Duck Hunt is the best-selling light gun game of all time. What's up, YouTube? I'm Choctopus, and this week we are breaking down the dynamic dog and duck duo Duck Hunt, and that was incredibly hard to say. I'm not gonna lie. And ironically, right after another famous duo was just announced for Smash. Now, Duck Hunt is a lightweight with a great tool set for turtling and playing defensively, so you can lure your opponents in and then set up for some really interesting combos. And did you know that you have the power to vote on which character we're going to break down next week? That's right, you can play God, so make sure you vote for the character you want to see next week down in the comment section, and let's get into the breakdown. First, we're going to talk about Duck Hunt's neutral attack, starting with their jab. And they have two jabs. You have the Gentleman's Jab, which is this three-hit combo that actually combos out of a, a weak nair up until around 40%. So you can do a weak nair fastball right into a Gentleman's Jab, and it'll be true. You also have a Rapid Jab, which is done by hitting A repeatedly, and the duck will attack you with a flurry of pecks as if you were made of bread. Then we have Duck Hunt's dash attack, which is this sliding peck. Now, it has two hits. The first hit is a normal early hit, and it'll knock your opponent back. It'll deal more damage because it's the stronger of the two. But if you hit your opponent late, and when I say late, I mean this is an extremely late hit. This hit is so late, it might as well be Facebook's meme culture. But if you hit your opponent late, instead of knocking them back, it's going to pop your opponent over and behind you. So if you do manage to get a late hit, if I can actually do it, you can follow up with either a back air or you can start a series of up airs. Dash attack is also a good follow up to both weak and strong forward airs at low to mid percents. Next, we're gonna talk about Duck Hunt's smash attacks and all of their smash attacks hit three times and they're all strong and reliable kill options. But they do have a ton of end lag, so you're going to want to use them wisely. Now, starting with the F Smash, which actually has a decent range, you can actually extend it by charging the attack. Then you have the Up Smash, which will pull from the side as well. Now, a good setup into an Up Smash kill confirm is Clay Pigeon. So if you throw Clay Pigeon out there, you can explode it, dash under, and then do an Up Smash. Then we have Duck Hunt's Down Smash, which will actually low profile Duck Hunt, so you can dodge some attacks with it. So let's see, if we make Rob do his neutral special, maybe not that one, but uh, if he shoots his laser and you use Down Smash, you can actually low profile and the attack will miss. Now when using Down Smash, it hits three times, but it'll knock behind Duck Hunt every single time. So if you're facing to the right, the last attack is gonna pull and knock to the left. So if you're ledge guarding, and you want to knock your opponent back off the stage, you want to make sure you're facing the opposite way. This is also a good attack for opponents that are doing directional air dodges because you can catch them on the landing. Duck Hunt's special moves are likely where we're going to spend the most time because this is where a lot of Duck Hunt's utility and combo setups are going to come from. Starting with Neutral B, which is the trick shot where you can throw out this explosive Hogan's Alley can and hitting B will make it bounce. The more times you hit it, the more, expl uh, the more powerful it's going to get, and then you can hit it a finite amount of times before it ultimately explodes. If the can is on the ground, it'll explode after some time, but in order to do damage to your opponent, it needs to connect with them in the air. So whether that's hitting B, or whether that's using an attack to knock it into them, and also be careful because if your can's on the ground, your opponent can also knock it back into you and you'll take damage. And the trick shot will knock your opponent either left or right, depending on which way the can hits. So if it hits your opponent on the left side, it's gonna knock them to the right, whereas if it hits them on the right side, it's gonna knock them to the left. Now this is important to know because you can then set up for some combos. So if you throw your opponent into a can, you can follow up with a back air if it's going to knock them behind you. And you can also do the same with an up air. Now, because the can comes out frame one, you can also use it as a defensive tool. So if Rob is using his side smash and you know you're gonna get hit with it, 
you can throw a can out and then you can knock yourself in a different direction to save yourself from getting killed. Now keep in mind that that's not always the case, but it does help, especially in a situation where you know an attack is going to connect. Another important thing to know is you can kick the can in virtually any capacity. You could be free falling from a recovery and you can still move it. So it's important because you want to manage the can, especially if you want to use it for for combo. So if I have a can behind me and it's grounded, you know, I can hit it a couple times and I can back throw into it. And then from there, I could extend the combo, back throw, and then I can follow up with a back air or something else. Alternatively, you can use the can to protect against ledge guarding when trying to recover. And this is where we're going to shift to talk about Duck Hunt's recovery because there's actually a lot more depth here than just hitting up B and hoping you make it back to the stage. So if you hit up B, after a while, the duck is going to be tired of carrying this dog's fat ass and you're going to free fall and be helpless. However, after frame 51, you can actually act. So you can do an air attack or you can do an air dodge to even extend the length of the recovery. So if you hit up B, after frame 51, you'll notice you'll be able to do either uh, an air attack or you'll be able to do an air dodge. So if you recover high and you don't go to ledge, you can actually do a nair to fast fall to make it back to the ground sooner. So if you're up against an opponent that is really good at ledge guarding and they have really good offstage game, so Rob, for example, can hang out off the stage for an eternity. So you can actually throw the can out by hitting B, then you hit up B to start your recovery, and then you're going to alternate between hitting right and B. Now, it's a little bit tricky because if you hit side B in the middle of your recovery, you're screwed and you're going to fall to your death. So what you're going to want to do is practice hitting the can and recovering to the right at the same time. So you're actually going to do up B and you're going to do right and B alternating. Side B is Duck Hunt's Clay Pigeon and this is a great combo starter. So hitting side B will just throw out the Clay Pigeon and then you have to hit B one more time in order to shoot it. Now, you can change the speed that it's thrown, so just hitting side and B will throw it out relatively slow, but if you smash the stick, it'll come out a lot faster. Now the cool thing is when it hits your opponent, it'll kind of hang there for a second, because when you throw a clay pigeon, you can't act right away. You have a little bit of delay before you can even dash towards your opponent, so when you throw it out, you want to wait a second before you detonate it so you can get in range to do a combo. And this will combo virtually into anything. So you can combo into an up tilt at low percents. You can combo into air attacks. It's also a good setup for kill confirms at higher percents. So one of them is if you get your opponent close to the ledge, and you manage to catch them, you can follow up with a down air. And around 130, a sweet spotted back air will kill your opponent. And you can really mix these combos up. You could do Clay Pigeon into an up tilt, right into an up air. Or you can do a Clay Pigeon into an up smash. And then we have Down B, which is Duck Hunt's Wild Gunman. And this is where you'll summon one of five random gunmen. And it's completely RNG based, so you don't know which one you're going to get. But what you should know is that the Sombrero Gunman is the strongest. We got him on the first try there. Is the strongest and has the best kill potential. Now, when you're using them on the ground, it takes a second to summon them because Duck Hunt is going to do this little pose. But what I like to do is I like to do a short hop into it because you can transition into a dash a lot easier. Now, two of the gunmen, if you do a grab, will actually make you break the grab. So if you do a down B and then you either get the black coat or you get the the sombrero, they'll actually make you break your grab, so you can do grab-release combos. But against the weaker ones, so if we get the skinny uh, white shirt one, you can actually hold your opponent during it. So like here, I'm not able to against the black one, but nope, we want a different one. The orange coat you can grab, and then you can do a down throw into a forward air, so that's a pretty easy combo, because you'll be able to hold the grab while they shoot. But if you get one of the stronger ones, you can do a grab-release combo, and then you can do something like a down smash or a forward smash. The gunmen can also be defeated by your opponent, so if they do hit them, they can knock them into a tumble, and they'll kind of hang there on stage for a second and absorb some damage. You can also use gunmen defensively when you are trying to recover, because if your opponent jumps off the stage, and they're at a high percent, and you manage to hit them with one of the stronger gunmen, it can actually stage spike them, and you can pick up the kill and recover. Now, this in combination with the can 
makes it really hard to ledge guard against Duck Hunt because you can use the can and you can use, we just died there because I accidentally clay pigeoned, but you can use the gunman and the can to cover yourself as you're trying to recover back to the stage. Next, we have Duck Hunt's tilts, starting with their forward tilt, which is this forward peck, and you can angle it upward or downward like most forward tilts. It's a good tool for poking because it has good range, but also it combos pretty nicely out of both strong and weak nares. So out of a weak nair at all percents, you know, you can basically do a weak nair into a forward tilt. However, at strong percents, it only really works up until about 20 because the knockback is too strong. However, you can do a strong nair into a dash cancel right into a forward tilt. Their down tilt is this low profile peck, and similar to the down smash, you can use it to avoid some attacks because Duck Hunt is really low to the ground, and it'll work similar to forward tilt, so you can do it out of both weak and strong nares. Um, but the important thing is, it launches at a low angle, so you can use it to set up some tech chase situations. Then you have the up tilt, which is this overhead attack, which will actually pull your opponent from the front or the back and pull them overhead, at least in most cases. I was testing against Link earlier and it wasn't working, so it may not be every character, but against Rob, for example, you can do an up tilt and it has pretty good knockback at 0% or knock up, so it'll pull right overhead and you can combo very easily into an up air. Also, starting at 120%, up tilt is a good option for setting up into an up air kill, but that's only if your opponent doesn't DI out of it. Next, we're gonna cover Duck Hunt's air attacks, starting with the neutral air, which is this cartwheel. And this is going to be one of your more universal attacks. You're gonna be using it more because it's a great combo starter, because you can do it into, like I showed you earlier, into down tilts, you can do it into forward tilts, and it has two properties. So you have the weak nair, which you can do by doing your nair and then fast falling, or you can do a hard nair, which is done by using it when you're on top of your opponent. Now the thing about Duck Hunt's Nair is that it has a really long delay after you use it in the air, but you can auto cancel it by fast falling on the ground and it'll take away a lot of that ending lag. So just keep that in mind when you're using it to ledge guard because it's not a bad ledge guard option because it has a really long lasting hitbox. So you can Nair fast fall, but be careful because like I said, it lasts a little while before you can act but Duck Hunt's recovery is enough to easily get back to the ledge. Then we have their forward air, which has good reach, and it's a good option for zoning and poking in neutral. Now, it looks like the duck would have a bigger hitbox than it does, but it actually comes straight out, and then it loops around the dog. So if you are close to your opponent, it's not going to hit because the duck is kind of going behind in the z-axis however the attack does have a sweet spot so if you're right on top of your opponent it's going to deal less damage have less knockback but you want to catch your opponent with the beak because that's where it's going to deal more damage and that's the stronger hit a strong forward air will combo into a forward tilt up until around 20 percent and then after that you can actually substitute with a dash attack Duck Hunt's back air is one of your stronger air attacks, and it's also one of your best offstage kill options, especially at a higher percent if you can hit your opponent with the sweet spot, which is the duck's bill. And like we spoke about earlier, Clay Pigeon is a good setup into a reverse aerial rush back air on stage. Duck Hunt's up air is this overhead triple peck, and this is a great option for juggling your opponent, so if you get him up in the air, it knocks straight up, so it's really easy to juggle. Also, at high percents, it's not a bad kill option. And some more advanced things you can do with it, similar to Sheik and Greninja's up air, and this is a little more difficult to pull off, but you can use it for drag down combo. So if you get your opponent overhead, let's say you do an up tilt or use a clay pigeon, you can then do an up air and you can drag your opponent down to extend the combo. Hang on, so we'll show you a better one. So you have up tilt and then you can drag down and then you can do something like a, a tilt or you can extend into a smash attack or something else. And then finally we have Duck Hunt's down air which actually hits twice. You have the dog that hits first and then you have the duck that comes in for the second hit. And the second hit is gonna be the one that spikes. And the hitbox is pretty consistent. It's an easy spike to pull off. So if your opponent's off the stage, you can follow up and try and spike them or you can even use a clay pigeon if they're close to the edge because you can trap them and then you can rush them, if we can actually hit it. There you go. 
And finally, we have Duck Hunt's throws. So their forward throw actually sets your opponent into tumble pretty early. So you can use it to set up tech chase situations. You have the back throw, which is the most damaging. And forward and back throws are really good for can combos because you can throw a can out there and then you can either forward throw or back throw your opponent into it and you can extend the combo from there. So if you have a combo, or combo, you have a can behind you, you can knock it up, you can throw back into it, you can follow up with a back air. There's a lot of different things that you can do. And then you have the up throw, which throws your opponent straight overhead, so it's really good for setting up an aerial juggle. And you have the down throw, which at low percents can combo into a forward air, or at high percents against opponents that are bad at DIing. You can set up for a kill situation with an up air or reverse aerial rush back air. That's it for Duck Hunt's breakdown. Now go forth and grab some W's with this dynamic duo. And if you liked this video, go hit the thumbs up button because I, I need to eat. And if you're new to the channel, we do weekly Smash breakdowns in addition to a lot of other fun content. I have some other videos in the works, both Smash and non-Smash. So if that's your bag and you're new here, you're welcome to subscribe, but only if you want to. Also, check me out on socials and Twitch, and uh, you can join our Discord as well. All those links are in the video description. Thanks for watching, and we will see you next time.